Hi friends, it's me, Erica, with the Crocheted Caution Tape, where we discuss all things spooky, mysterious, true crime, and dark history. So if you like any of those and you enjoy crocheting, please feel free to follow along, um, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, feel free to share with your family and friends. And then let's get into it. Well, actually, before we get into it, I do need to do a PSA. Warning. This episode discusses some very gruesome facts and details. And it's not for the faint of heart, and it's definitely not for the young. So feel free to, if this is not something that you feel comfortable with, feel free to scroll along. If you do like this and you do enjoy learning about uh, crimes in the past, then stick around. Today we are going to discuss Heterogenia Zawanda, or better known as the skin Virginia was a 23-year-old uh, woman in Krakow, Poland. I may be saying her name wrong. I may be saying a lot of names wrong in this, so apologies to uh, the Polish. Um, she was a student at the uh, Jagiellonian University, where she was uh, studying theology, starting in 1998. Before then, she had changed her uh, major a couple times, like most young adults do. Um, Heterogenia was said to have been a lovely lady, um, but also sorrowful and reclusive. And this is due to um, her father passing away in 1996. Um... Heterogenia was trying to get help for her depression. On November 12, 1998, she was supposed to meet her ma at the uh, psychiatric clinic where she was receiving treatment for her depression. Um, but she never arrived. And it was not like Heterogenia to not arrive to her place. She's always there. So, um, yeah, her mom tried to report her missing and was told to wait until later. I absolutely despise that. I hate whenever you're trying to report somebody missing. And they say that you have to wait a certain amount of time for them to have been gone in order for that you to report them missing. I think that is crazy and that is ridiculous. And you should be able to report somebody missing in no amount of time. So, uh, Kater, genius mom, she had did what she could. She uh, was putting up missing poster pictures, uh, posters um, all around the university and into Central Krakow. Uh, she contacted the Domin Dominican. Monastery, and they advised her to contact the police again. So she did. And they were not concerned because Cartagena was, in fact, an adult. And they were just like, oh, no, she's okay. She'll return. She'll come back. Um, yeah. After she uh, had missed her appointment, Cartagena's mom had... Uh, gone to Katarzyna's apartment to see if she can find her there, find anything that would say where she was there. She found no trace of her. At first, the 90s man. At first, she thought Katarzyna had joined the cult. I don't understand why that is like was a normal thing that yeah, no, they're, they're missing. They went to a cult. They joined a cult. It's okay. She's okay. She's in a cult. 
why was that the first thought of so many cases? Why? Uh, and due to uh, Caterginia's depression, many thought that she had um, unalived herself. Apparently that was very common in the 90s and the youth culture of the time. They would either join cults or they would join Satanism during the um, depressing autumn season. I mean, maybe I was too young in the 90s to notice any of this, but I don't remember there being a lot of Satanist activity, Satanic activity, or any cults going around, at least not in my area. So I don't, I don't know. Oh, there's a bee. There's a bee. I'm a bitch. Okay. Oh, so after Katarzyna's disappearance, and she, her mother had put up all the missing poster pictures, missing person t- posters. Or they're difficult today, okay? Um, she did receive calls from a man that was requesting to visit her, like for them to meet up in the uh, Krakow Market Square. Um, her mother had and a private investigator trying to also look for her, and he advised her not to go. He thought it was a prank, and for her safety, he advised her not to go. I mean, you know, I get it, but at the same time, they were meeting in a market square that was always filled with people, and, you know, she he actually did know something about her, and, you know, I would have gone. That's a shit. So, yeah. Crazy. Um, someone did report seeing Katarzyna in uh, on a riding on a bus going to Walbrom, um, but they weren't able to uh, narrow down the date. They don't know if it was before or after she had gone missing. Two months after she was missing. On January 6th, 1999, um, a tugboat captain, Captain um, Mysick's Law, made a very disturbing discovery on his tugboat. Him and his crew were uh, docking the tugboat in, at the Vistula River, and they noticed that their um, their propeller was acting wasn't it wasn't it wasn't normal. And they noticed they saw something wrapped around it and they thought it was just like a thick fabric. So the captain was like, All right, you know, we've been out for so long, let's go home, we'll take care of this in the morning, we'll remove it and get everything cleaned up. Oh, was he for in a surprise in the morning. When they pulled the propeller up and started uh to remove the thick thick fabric yeah, they realized that it wasn't thick fabric. They realized that it was human skin. They had never seen anything like this before. The police had never seen anything like this before. They had no idea what was going on. So the Krakow police um, requested help from psychiatrists, um, forensic scientists all over Europe, and even FBI psychiatrists. Uh, so after you know, um, and they were investigating it. They had realized that the skin had been in the water for at least two to three weeks. Um, at first thought, you know, they thought that um, the propeller of the tugboat is like it, it had come in contact with her body in the water, and that is how the skin got wrapped around the propeller. Um, but after several investigations with the pathologist, it was soon discovered that um, the skin had been intentionally removed. It was not an accident. Uh, so Katarzyna had also, it also came out that she had been um, tormented and assaulted and um, 
drugs over the course of two weeks before she was skinned alive. She went through all this, and then she was skinned while she was alive. It's just awful, awful. Um, so, two weeks after the skin had been found, um, part of her leg was found in the Vistula River. Like they had been searching for the remains. The rainy, remaining body of who belonged to the uh, skin that was found, and they found a limb. Again, um, the limb had been intentionally removed from below the knee. So, not only uh, did the um, murderer. Not only did he or she uh, skin her alive, they also intentionally dissected her limbs and skull from her body. It's crazy, right? Definite gives off like these again Texas Chainsaw Massacre vibes. They did later find um, garment parts of clothing, um, fuck flesh, and the delay that was cut from below the knee. So this case was actually the first case that DNA was used to identify a victim. Um, okay, so that's something that came from it, but yeah. Uh, there were a couple of suspects that the police were looking into. The first one was a man named Vladimir. Vladimir was from Russia. He was in Poland. Like his family had moved to Poland. So Vladimir, so Vladimir had murdered and um, skinned his dad. He wanted to um, confuse his grandfather that uh, had dementia and you know, he used the skin of his dad's face as a mask and wore his dad's clothes to make his grandfather think that it was his dad. That worked for a little bit. But grandfather wasn't doing so good. Uh, but the grandfather did find uh, the, the, the body of his son. Vlad was convicted of his father's murder. There was no indication that Vlad knew Katarzyna. They had nothing in common. They didn't go. Um, they were the same age, and they did attend the same college, but, you know, colleges are big. There's a lot of people. They didn't have the same classes. They didn't run in the same circles. There was no indication that they knew each other at all. Um... So after Vlad was convicted of his father's murder, he was sentenced to life in prison in Poland. However, after five years of this sentence, he was sent back to Russia to serve the remaining portion of his sentence. This meant that he could never be prosecuted by Poland again. They, Russia wasn't going to extradite him back to Poland to get prosecuted again. The second suspect, Robert Zemnowski. Zemnowski. Robert. Robert J. Uh, he was a former employee of the Krakow Institute of Zoology. He studied.
studied martial arts. Um, he knew Caterginio. I'm not entirely sure how he knew Caterginio, but he knew Caterginio. Uh, he would was seen visiting uh, Caterginio's grave multiple times. Um, he had a history of harassing women. He lost his job at the um, institute the day after he um, slaughtered all the bunnies at the zoo. That's that's a little sus there. That's a little sus. Yeah, I'm gonna kill all the bunnies. <sighs> so he was um, he had no explanation as to why he did this. He couldn't tell them why. He couldn't tell anybody why he killed the bunnies. Why he wasn't put in jail for that, I don't know, but hey. You know, it's just it's just crazy. Okay. It's just crazy. Um, he also had worked in a dissecting lab where he uh, handled human remains at some point. And at the institute, he had access, like readily available access, to the supplies to um, that was used for animal skin preparation. New Caterginia, martial arts training, um, killed all the bunnies at a zoo, had handled dissecting human remains, and had access to skin preparation supplies. Yeah, that's the guy. Robert J. was uh, sentenced to life in prison for the murders at Caterginia in 2022. Last year, a year ago, this man was sitting to life in prison for killing a woman in 1996. He wasn't. He was arrested in October 2017. It took 19 years to solve it, but it was solved. Robert is serving life in prison in Poland for the horrific crimes that he had performed. It's craziness. Well, that is the story of um, Katarzyna Zawanda in Poland. So sad. Um, I am hoping to do a lighter, more on the spooky side story next time. Um, the past two stories have been a little, they've, they've, they've been rough. They've been rough. I, that concludes today's episode. I hope that um, you... I don't know. I can't really say enjoy it because that was a horrific story. But yeah. Um I messed up on oh, one of my stitches. Okay. Okay. Um yeah, that was today's story. Uh if you enjoy crocheting and learning about spooky, mysterious, true crime, dark history please make sure that you uh, hit that like button, you hit that subscribe button, and that notification button, so you know whenever new videos come out. Um, feel free to share this with your family and your friends who you think would be interested in learning more about true crime, spooky, dark history, all that stuff that we dive into here at the Crocheted Fashion Tape. In the meantime, I will be uh, seeing you guys later. You have a fantastic day. Hey, take care of yourself. Be kind to others. And I'll be seeing you guys later. Bye-bye.